So I call the meeting to order and the roll call will see that everyone's here. And Ashley, our student, uh, student board members here, trustee, and welcome to everybody. We have a couple of joyous things to take out of order. Um, I'll turn it over to Lori. Yes, thank you very much. And our, our uh, first um, award or recognition is for our longevity awards. And we have two individuals with us tonight who we are recognizing. And uh, we first have uh, Ricardo Guerrero and then uh, Lisa Lopez. So to introduce Ricardo, I would ask that Gaspar Lomelli come up, please. Okay. <laughs> Hello, um, just wanted to introduce uh, Ricardo Guerrero, who's been with us for 20 years. And he's just, we were just talking about it, the hardest thing for him is the hours because he's got a family, he's got two things to take care of, but he's a fantastic worker, great person. Anytime I need help, he doesn't hesitate to help out. Um, and he's one of the kind of guys that he, he and I always talk about different chemicals, different equipment. Um, he always gets these updates and say, hey, look at this machine, look at that machine. And so he and I have been working together for 20 years and it's a really great relationship that we've got. So, you know, thanks for him. The campus looks as good as it does. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I was going to ask. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. What's the name of your uh, position? Thank you for everything. Um, I'm unlucky when uh, when uh, working in the city college. So. This is only that say, and thank you, Gaspar, for speaking to me. Okay, yeah. what, what is your job? That's what we want to know, what your job is. I say custodian. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. good, good. And you work what uh, shift? What shift? Night shift. Night shift. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. So this is, this is one of those unsung heroes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> we wouldn't function without them so good for him 20 years is a long time <laughs> and we uh, would like to welcome Paul Bishop uh, down to introduce our next person to be recognized. Huh? Oh. <laughs> uh, President Bloom and members of the board, Superintendent, President Gaskin, it's my great pleasure to honor Lisa Lopez today for 15 years of service to Santa Barbara City College. Uh, <laughs> Lisa is uh, an administrative assistant in, in my office, and that's why we're here together, uh, and has worked for me for the past eight years. But Lisa began her career at Santa Barbara City College as an administrative assistant for Gail Baker, who was then a, a dean of educational programs. And it wasn't until 2004 that Lisa came over to the IT department. Uh, and during her tenure, you know, lots of things have changed in information technology. So Lisa's been kind of a stabilizing force uh, within the IT department as we've moved, you know, hundreds of like manual systems to automated digital systems now. So those changes are always very difficult to manage and, and Lisa's been an inter integral part in doing that. Uh, she, she's also... Uh, quickly uh, mastered some of the new stuff that we're doing uh, with cloud computing and, and, and Google Apps and Google Docs are all a part of that. And in fact, Lisa's been so, doing that so well that she's been moving out to some of the other departments and showing them you know, all the things that you can do using the new tools. In fact, you know, she manages our calendar now so we can schedule all these different events and invites people to the events. We can schedule rooms and resources. And, and she's done that with you know, such skill that now we can export her out to some of the other areas so they can <laughs> learn that as well. But not only has Lisa been doing that, but she's been coordinating uh, our United Way campaign with me for the last 
I don't know, how many Seven years? years? Seven years we've been doing it, and, and every year we get a little better at it, and Lisa gets to do a lot more of it each year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, besides that, Lisa's also been the, the real force behind our United Way Day of Caring. And I don't know if you know this, but for the past three years, we've had the most volunteers participate in that program. Uh, we, you know, Westmont used to be the real winner because they bring all the students from the dormitories. But Lisa did one better. She got all our international student groups and our clubs and so, and our cheerleaders. And mm -hmm. so uh, we, had tw we had over 200 at this last day of caring, beating Westmont by almost 100. Uh, and this is always due to Lisa's energy and enthusiasm and, and strong attention to detail. Well, Lisa knows the campus well. After graduating from Santa Barbara High, she came to City College and got her AA degree. Uh, and then 2003, she took uh, classes at Cal State Long Beach to get her undergraduate degree in uh, liberal, nope, wait, wait. Professional studies. Professional studies. <laughs> and, and she got her degree in 2005. And Lisa was such an outstanding role model that both her daughters went to Santa Barbara City College, graduated, graduated and now are finishing up at uh, UC, or, uh, University of San Diego and San, Di San Diego State University. Mm -hmm. And in fact, her husband's also an alumnus of Santa Barbara City <laughs> College. Now, her, who do who her two little dogs, however, have avoided all attempts at training or any higher education. <laughs> I would like to personally thank Lisa for her contributions to our department, for being a great colleague and friend. So please join me in giving Lisa a well-deserved round of applause. Okay, I'm not really a public speaker here, but I'll say a little bit. I just want to thank Santa Barbara City College and all of my colleagues for all the wonderful opportunities I've had here educationally and career-wise. Um, it's been a great move to have come here 13, 15 years ago and to bring my children up in such a great environment. They are truly, truly, I am so proud of them. And um, it is because of this wonderful environment that we can enrich our children to move on and be prosperous and productive in our society. So I want to thank Santa Barbara City College and all of you, and I look forward to the next 15 years. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, that was nice. Um, <laughs> once a mom, always a mom, huh? Lisa's a graduate of Santa Barbara High School. That's kind of fun, too. Deep roots. Lisa, I have a question. Uh -oh. is, it, is it okay if just anybody comes up to your office and participates in the United Way campaign with oh. you? Oh, but of course. I invite everybody. Oh, yeah. what a wonderful idea. <laughs> <laughs> and the day of caring, we probably should show up for that day, too. I like That'd to get fun. as many numbers as I can to just really express that it's on our city college and it's just that's good. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Lisa. That's good. Okay, we have a resolution. Uh, Lori? Yes, we're taking um, item 6.2F out of order. So it's actually the last item in your packet, your mm -hmm. regular packet. And it's uh, a pretty big item, 6.2F, entitled Resolution Number 41, authorizing the issuance of SBCCD bonds associated with the Measure V election of 2008. And uh, as you will recall, back in uh, June of 2008, the electorate in the district 
uh, voted um, support for Measure V, which was a $77.7 million bond. The first issuance of that bond allowed us to um, do most of the projects that uh, have been presented to you and, and uh, uh, you have been amply briefed on. And that first issuance, Series A, was uh, $47.7 We have $30 million remaining uh, associated with the Measure V bond. And we have uh, uh, two significant projects, one about halfway completed, that's the renovation of the humanities, and the second and last project then is the new classroom building on the West Campus. So we are uh, recommending um, uh, two subsequent um, uh, issuances, Series B and Series C, and tonight being presented to you is Series B in the amount not to exceed $15 million. And here to um, describe this resolution is our bond counsel, uh, Mr. David Kesnoka. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is David Kaznoka from Stradling, Yucca, Carlson, and Roth in San Francisco. Um, as Lori said, the resolution authorizes the issuance of $15 million of general obligation bonds. It also approves several other documents, including a preliminary official statement, which is a very thick document that is distributed to investors and on which they make an investment decision as to whether or not they want to buy your bonds. And the resolution also approves the form of a contract of purchase between the district and RBC Capital Markets. They'll buy your bonds directly from you and then resell them to members of the public. So the resolution authorizes both of those documents and it sets parameters for the staff to complete the transaction without having to come back to the board. So the resolution sets the par amount, as Lori had suggested, at $15 million. It caps the underwriter's compensation at 0.4% of the par amount of bonds that are sold. And as you've been reading in the newspaper, school bonds that were sold as capital appreciation bonds have been getting an unusual amount of news coverage. The resolution you have in front of you does not authorize any of those types of bonds to be sold. All $15 million are going to be current interest bonds. They'll have a maturity of 25 years, which is the garden variety standard term for a community college general obligation bond. So the reason why the resolution seems a little fat is that it has all of the bond provisions in it. The county resolution, the county is going to adopt a resolution in which they agree to levy the tax, um, and their resolution is just a page or two long, and they'll be adopting that in the course of the next several weeks. So that said, um, and as I guess a general reminder, general obligation bonds are not uh, paid at all from any monies of the district other than the levy of the ad valorem property tax. So there's no <coughs> general fund exposure whatsoever under any conditions with respect to this bond. Okay. Good. Any, uh, do we have any speaking slips or anything like that? Nothing. Uh, okay. Should we not uh, uh, approve? We should. I just wanted to make sure nobody else wanted to talk about it, though. Oh, okay. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just I have just one question. The C the C uh, side of this will be what what's the time frame for that? We're projecting you know? about two years, uh, where we we have not yet gotten I know. approval yeah. for the new uh, buildings. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, any more discussion? We have a motion, so we can have a. Roll call. I move approval. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Approval and second. Any any discussion? Okay. You can call the roll. Trustee Dieter? Aye. Trustee Bloom? Aye. Trustee Kronzer? Aye. Trustee Gallardo? Aye. Trustee Haslund? Aye. Trustee Kugler? Aye. Trustee Becker? Aye. Trustee Nielsen? Aye. Okay. And thank you so much. I think we're we're on our way here. There that's good. Okay, hearing of citizens, do you have any? Okay, no citizens. Well, there's citizens, but there's nobody wanting to talk. Recognition, Administrator of the Year, this is exciting too. Laurie? Yes, it's, um, it's delightful to be able to recognize our employees, and this is um, uh, certainly a hallmark occasion. Quite often what we do, and I'm guilty of this, is to talk about faculty and staff, and I don't often insert the word administrator because I 
sometimes think it's all-encompassing. But um, uh, we cannot forget that uh, our administrators are the um, kind of the gears that ensure that the college operates both from an instructional end, a student support end, and an operational end. And we have a cadre of uh, probably 55 or something uh, administrators who are exemplary. They um, stand alone in terms of their commitment, their loyalty, and their dedication. And truly, I would um, expect that the institution would want to honor all uh, five dozen of them. But with Administrator of the Year, just as with Staff of the Year or Faculty of the Year, there is um, a one that we will be uh, recommending or, or acknowledging today. But there are also some honorable mentions. And so I wanted to um, begin by recognizing the finalists. And there are four finalists and one final winner. So uh, I would like to ask Jack Friedlander to come up. He is a finalist, uh, an honorable mention for this. Okay. I'm going to go down here. Uh, Jack is our executive vice president, and I wanted to read to you a couple of things that were um, offered up in support of Jack's nomination. And the nominators spoke about uh, Jack having all of the qualities of a successful administrator. He's innovative, he's creative, intelligent, hardworking, loyal, incredibly loyal, trustworthy, dedicated, but above all, he is a strong advocate for students and for the mission of community colleges. He is um, uh, uh, uniquely qualified as a leader because of his superb intellect, his extraordinary vision, and an incredible dedication. And if there's two things that stand out about Jack, it is that curiosity coupled with creativity that has driven this institution, as well as his unwavering commitment to students. So it's my honor on behalf uh, half of the entire institution, and most notably the managers group, to recognize Jack as an honorable mention. So if I can um, find this <laughs> non-alphabetical <laughs> order. <laughs> Our second um, honorable mention is uh, Karen Sophia. And I thought I saw, yes. Karen is our Director of Marketing and Publications. And I have to tell you, there's no one better than her. Her brain is constantly in motion. And she has such an um, optimistic, positive outlook about everything related to SBCC. She is really the face, the voice, the vision of how we look out to the public. So one of her nominees indicated that I have found Karen to be inspirational, motivating, and extremely effective at the task at hand. What most impresses me about Karen is how she works with her staff and encourages them to become leaders. It's that leaders beget leaders and uh, that they become the best they can. She empowers them to do their job, gives them tools and encouragement that they need to achieve their goals. Over the past few years, all of us have had to be flexible, patient, diplomatic, and do more with less. No one has been more graceful in taking on the challenges we face than Karen. So I have to tell you, when I call Karen from Washington, D.C. after the big event, and I say, Karen, we need a, a number one, SBCC number one logo, Karen has been absolutely phenomenal in that regard, layering all of that celebration on top of her regular workload, highly deserving of being recognized with this honorable mention. Yeah. Our next honorable mention is our Director of Educational Applications, Jason Walker. Jason leads his staff with passion and commitment. That's probably his middle names, passion and commitment. <laughs> he truly exemplifies that. He has a can-do attitude that is passed on to his staff. 
and it's through his leadership that the staff and the whole area is responsive, professional, and accurate in any task or responsibility. Jason um, is appreciative. He shows his appreciation with attentiveness. He's got innovative ideas. He has garnered the respect of others, and most of all, his drive to continually improve upon the processes for which he is responsible. He has an unflagging commitment to SBCC. Jason was a student here, met his wife here, and has worked here in a number of capacities, being promoted to his current position. And he truly understands the mission of SBCC and is most deserving of this honor. And uh, the, the last but not the least, it's only because it's alphabetical order for the honorable mentions, is uh, Dan Watkins, our Director of IT, Infrastructure and Systems. So Dan is described uh, with his leadership qualities as uh, just Herculean in his achievements with things like the Banner Implementation Project, his participation in campus life, he motivates employees, he has the keen ability to delegate, but to also um, ensure that projects are moving toward that, that big vision. He has trustworthiness, his dedication to the department, his team building abilities. He models professionalism, identifies and nurtures strengths in others. He's courageous, resilient, I could go on and on. But regardless of the role or his capacity, Dan has proven himself to be one of SBCC's most effective leaders. He exemplifies the qualities of excellence as a leader, a manager, and a human being that we all hope to emulate. So Dan Watson. Wow, um, an incredible, incredible group of leaders, all of them. But the 2013 Administrator of the Year is the individual who I have the honor and privilege of recognizing. Uh, she is a true example of a servant leader, someone who is committed to serving others. She has taken the initiative to lead by example and inspires her staff to always advocate for our students. Her contagious optimism, coupled with her rolled up sleeve determination, has always made her an effective and formidable administrator and leader. Her leadership style is one that is direct and to the point. She resolves problems quickly when problems are encountered and her logic has always been sound. It's obvious that her 30 years working as an administrator has provided her with the skills, experience, and knowledge needed to be quite effective. She is highly revered by her employees, peers, and colleagues alike. Her unwavering commitment to student success is easily noticeable and admirable. We are inspired by her ability to connect with students given her administrative role. Her passion to serve underrepresented populations fuels her motivation to stay connected with students. Her focus in life is simple. It's all about students. And all of us are truly inspired by Marsha Wright, who is our director of EOPS. And Marsha is on FaceTime, so hi, Marsha. Can you see us? And Mar Marsha is where? Where in the United States? She's up in the Bay Area. She's up in the Bay Area. Marsha gets a beautiful plaque and a wonderful um, acknowledgement uh, uh, that uh, we're so appreciative of everything that she does to champion students and to champion SBCC. And it's most notable that Edith Rodriguez, who represented the voice of students, 21,000 students in Washington, D.C., is an EOPS student oh, and one of Marcia's. So uh, congratulations, Marcia. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> Hello? Yes, we can't. Do you want to? Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. We're traveling. We're walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now now talk. You're talking right into the I microphone. <laughs> I'm humble and I'm honored. And if it weren't for a two and a half year old granddaughter, I'd be there today. <laughs> But she gets priority over Santa Barbara City College. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to hear someone much. does. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, City College means the world to me. And it's wonderful to be able to go into work every day and serve the students and be with the tremendous staff that we have at the college. Thanks. Congratulations, Marcia. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say this is the first time this award has been given and the managers and uh, the administrators, management group it is of City College and I think that's really wonderful because we do honor the students and we honor the teachers but this is, you know, the managers also make the, the college successful so it's wonderful. And I was delighted to hear Marsha because I've known her a long time. I don't know where we met but she is a force in the community. She's really good. So. We're lucky to have her and that little granddaughter will have fun on the rug with her. I know how that works. So that's good. Um, okay, so we have next uh, minutes from the regular meeting of January 24th. Anybody have any corrections? Okay, can I, yes. I actually have a comment okay. relative to the minutes of sure. January 24th. Uh, the minutes reflect that Trustee Croninger attended the meeting by teleconference from Portland, Oregon. Yes. It was some subsequently brought to my attention that for teleconference meetings, roll call votes are required for all board actions. Huh. While this occurred for the business action items, the proper procedure was not followed for the consent and other board actions. However, since those actions were all unanimous votes and the recordings of all such votes are available online, the error was harmless. In the future, we will see to it that all voting will be by roll call when a board member attends by teleconference. Okay. We didn't know that, so thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any other corrections or anything? Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Marcia, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. Communications. Dean Nevins. Uh, board President Bloom, members of the Board of Trustees and College President Gaskin. Um, first of all, thank you all for participating in our joint meeting. That was a wonderful occasion. It's, it was hard to believe it was almost a month ago. <laughs> uh, it was nice. I think it was uh, very productive and also I hope we continue it in the future. I think it's a really good thing for us all to see each other and to kind of understand, put some names to the faces and faces to the names. Uh, the Senate has been working on a lot of issues. One of the things we did uh, recently was we had Doss Williams uh, address the Senate in a special meeting. Uh, we had a discussion of a lot of his legislative, legislative initiatives, and um, he uh, heard from the, uh, the people, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, he got quite an earful. Uh, I think he uh, learned a lot about how our perspective on things, and uh, it's very interesting to talk to a politician um, in a meeting like that because academics and politicians speak very different languages, and so it was kind of interesting trying to come up with solutions together because the process is very different. One's very focused on how you get a through people and by people, and one's focused on how you can winnow the ideas down. So it's a very different kind of culture. It was quite interesting. And I would like to thank uh, Assemblymember Williams for coming to us and talking with us. He was uh, quite, quite an excellent representative for our, our area. Uh, we also looked at the mission statement, and uh, we're also currently examining the college core principles. Um, those will, I'm sure you guys will end up with those uh, since they're, they belong to you at the college. Uh, and also we're looking at the, the core principles, which are kind of a, an addendum to the uh, mission statement, which kind of operationalized aspects of it. And so the faculty wanted to take a look at that too. So uh, give us an inch, right? Um, at OSU, we had an, a meeting where we interviewed the educational master plan. Uh, we were, it was an interesting discussion about that, what kind of things we wanted to see in the master plan, what the faculty perspective on it was. And uh, the last thing we dealt with was, uh, I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of things. We talked about many, many board policies, and those I'm just kind of saying, those constantly come through the Senate all the time. So I don't usually bring them up. Um, we also dealt with some calendaring issues where there was a proposal to have two summer sessions as a way to serve more students and that precipitated quite a lot of conversation. And um, I think essentially what we did is we kind of ran out of time on making it effective this summer, but uh, I think that'll be an ongoing conversation as we move forward. Any questions? 
Great. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Associated students, Geneva. Geneva here? No. Oh, of course, she's on spring break. How silly of us. Did you want to say something, Ashley? Sure. Okay. Um, well, we had the meet and greet, which was awesome. So I feel like it was really cool to meet um, all the members. And also, uh, some of our student senators went to March in March, which took place in Sacramento, which is really great. It was organized by the amazing Allison Curtis. So she's not here, but she was, and it was amazing. Um, also, uh, we had as many of you attended the SBCC Show Your Love, which I think went really, really well. It was super fun. Um, also, some of our senators just participated in Habitat for Humanity last Saturday, which was amazing. Um, it was, I'm so happy that we were there to help, and it's such a great organization. So I'm really happy that the students starting to get more and more involved in like community outreach, and we're hoping to involve more students next time instead of just um, student senators. Uh, we're also planning a talent show to raise money for the Student Senate and um, just kind of unify our students. So that should be coming up. And yeah, I think that's it for now, but <laughs> there's more to come. <laughs> Do you have a date for the talent show? I'm not sure what it is. I think it's still in progress, but okay. um, yeah, Myra is working on that. So okay, and you'll let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. Be okay, good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Classified employees, Liz. Madam Mayor. Yes. Madam Mayor. Madam President. Hi. Sorry. <coughs> I just wanted to comment on, on uh, what Ashley just mm -hmm. reported to us. And because I was out at Habitat mm -hmm. uh, earlier this week, and the, the accolades that come in the direction of Santa Barbara City College and the Student Senate were huge. They were so grateful for the help. And as you may know, they're moving, and uh, they, they were just ecstatic with our assistance. So thank you. I hope you'll carry that message back to Absolutely. the student senate. They'll That's be good. really happy to hear that. That's good. Those um, Habitat projects are so much fun to work on. You they feel like are. you pound a few nails and it's your house or something. I cool. yeah. got my hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. OK, Liz, classified employees. Uh, good afternoon, President Bloom, members of the board, President Gaskin. Um, I want to congratulate all the administrators who won. Um, I've worked with all of them, and they all uh, deserve the award. However, there's something you probably don't know about Marsha Wright. When I started as an employee here 23 years ago, Marsha actually worked in human resources. She was my first contact and gave me my orientation to the college. So that's something that goes way back, but she was a classified person who uh, and then she moved on and moved over to EOPS. But uh, congratulations, Marcia. And she was one of the first persons that I dealt with, actually, as an employee. I'd been a student, but as an employee. Uh, the, um, the classified consultation group has been involved in the uh, educational uh, planning. We met on our own to discuss it. And then uh, Matthew Lee met with our whole, we had a special meeting he met with our entire group which was appreciated and we went through the same exercise that the board went through at your meeting with the you had to fill out the thing and you had to think about things you know real fast in your eight minutes so uh, he went through that whole exercise with us so we were appreciative that he was willing to make the time to meet with our entire group and and let us participate in this planning process and that's about all It'll be interesting to see what he comes up with yeah. after all that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, report from the superintendent, president. Thank you. Um, there are, are many milestones in the life of a college. Uh, graduation is a milestone. The start of uh, the fall term is always a milestone. Awarding tenure is a milestone. Uh, seating new board members. But I think by far um, the most um, uh, remarkable milestone is when you're recognized nationwide as being um, a co-winner of the number one spot uh, for community college excellence. And um, to give you a sense of, of how that felt, um, with Kathy Malloy and Laura Castro's our articulation officer, Jack Friedlander, Edith Rodriguez, our student, and myself, we had the absolute honor and privilege of representing all of you, representing our close to 1,000 employees, uh, representing the community, and representing most notably the 21,000 students that we have uh, to accept this honor. And it was without question um, the highlight of, of my career. Um, because the award speaks about the past, about the present, 
and about the future. And it's really a tribute to all three of those elements in the history and in the being of the institution. It recognizes the contributions of our former faculty, staff, administrators, and board members, the current ones, and the ones who will be filling our shoes. And most notably, it focuses on what we're here for, and that's, I'm looking over at Ashley, the face of our students. Um, it's hard to represent 21,000 students. Ashley does it with such skill and grace. Geneva does it, Edith does it, and all of the rest of our, our students who in some way, shape, or form are contributing to our excellence. So I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Um, tonight, you recognize classified longevity. You recognized Administrator of the Year. And we are only as excellent as the people who make us up. And that starts with all of you, and it extends to all of our faculty, staff, and administrators. So truly, you saw just wonderful people tonight. And uh, that's simply a harbinger of, of everything that we have here in terms of our people. So we did receive an award. And um, because the award was glass and very special, because it's number one, I thought I would hand carry it so that it would not um, go into any kind of uh, disrepair or anything. Well, in the process of hand carrying it, it broke. Um, there is a bottom to it. And so it sits on this beautiful uh, base, but it does not any longer sit on the base. <laughs> so the minute I got back the next day, I emailed the Aspen Institute and say, I will pay double, triple, anything to get us a new one. So it's being shipped is my understanding. But I will pass this around. And what it says is the Aspen Institute 2013 Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence, co-winner, Santa Barbara City College. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, the city of Santa Barbara sent us a note um, to Dr. Lori Gaskin, president, on behalf of the Santa Barbara City Council as first place winner of the 2013 Aspen Institute for Community College Excellence Award, Santa Barbara City College faculty and students. We congratulate you on your outstanding achievements, signed Helene Schneider, mayor, dated March 25th, 2013. I'll pass that around. So we are planning um, um, a great deal of activity uh, around this event. And the activity is um, divided into our internal celebration, our external recognition, and how we're going to promote this to prospective students. And uh, you'll be seeing more about that. But one of the first things that we needed to do was just to really figure out how we wanted to ensure that everybody was very proud of the best institution in the nation in their backyard. Uh, the, I gave you each, this is what we all received at the awards ceremony. And I gave you each, and on the inside front cover is Manu, mm -hmm. Skandari. And then you turn the page and you see Cameron Sublet turning, Cameron, and then Ignacio Ponce. So we're really excited about this. And this um, speaks to why we were um, uh, awarded this honor. So that's my number one. And I, I would like to stop there, but I have um, a couple of other comments to make very briefly. I also wanted to acknowledge the foundation for Santa Barbara City College for the launch of the Campaign for Student Success. It was um, a celebration, and it certainly um, garnered energy and, and spirit around this whole campaign. So we're quite excited about that. And then finally, there's nothing special in April other than April 16th is a joint board meeting with Santa Barbara Unified School District, Carp, Carpinteria Unified School District, and us. The location will be BC 214. The time is tentatively 5.30. The topics are at the request of those boards and us. Uh, they, they would like to know the status of SBCC given Prop 30 and where we stand relative to course offerings. Our dual enrollment program. Um, college connection, uh, that is the linkage, the, the flow of students from the unified districts to the college, and then our transfer preparation programs. So that's what we be, will be doing April 16th. That's it. That's good. 
it, it'll be historic in some ways because we haven't done that before, but it's it's just so needed. You can tell because it's already a full agenda, so that should be good. So, and thank you. And uh, it, it's just truly a kick to be number one in the country, but you know, um, I guess we are. And there you go. I just keep thinking, what's wrong with the other thousand units? Places? No, that's not nice. But <laughs> but it just seems like a you know a very truly a, a wonderful honor. And as you walk around this campus, um, and you can talk to people and just see what they think about it, and they're all very proud of it. So the, the word's out. And I will share with you, I think that this will bring um, um, kind of tears to your eyes. Um, I walk around campus now after, and it's only been, what, four days after the event, and right. students would stop me and say that they had listened to it in their class, that some of the faculty had put it on the, the screen, cool. and they had watched it. And to a person so, so proud to be associated yeah. with SBCC. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do We're doing okay. That's wonderful. Doing Great. Okay, thank you. And next we have from board members, any reports from, from any of the committees? Okay. Um, Dr. Haslam? This, um, today is the first day of the, um, of the 21st uh, year conference of the Model United Nations that we've been effective in sponsoring uh, from our campus. And apropos of what Lori just said, I, I was in the luncheon line uh, and one of the students, they didn't, they have no idea who I am. And I certainly didn't introduce myself. So I, I happened to see a student who was coming from Santa Barbara City College and I asked her, you know, how does it, how, what are you doing and how, how is it, does it feel? And she started talking with rave reviews about her professor and about Santa Barbara City College winning a first place mm -hmm. and how that made her feel. And uh, uh, it, was, it was inspiring. I mean, she was just so happy about, about that and, and about the, the role she was playing in the Model UN. This is our, our little program that I'd be happy to share with anybody uh, who's willing to stand still long enough to get a copy. And, <laughs> and if you have an inclination, you're free to come over there because Nothing that I ever did in the classroom compares to having students assume roles other than their own, uh, assume a country representation, or s try to, trying to look at major global problems from a different point of view. And they're doing such a fine job and learning so much from the process. Uh, um, and then to run into the student from Santa Barbara City College, rave reviews, I thought was just inspiring. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Anybody else, uh, Ms. Croninger? Um, we have a facilities committee that met on uh, Monday, and um, before I give the brief report there, I'd just like to say such a such a wonderful occasion, the the Aspen Award, and um, thank you to all of the students, the staff, <clears throat> the faculty, the administrators. Um, it's you who caused that to happen, and we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, more mundane things. Um, in facilities, we're going to be working on a mission statement. Um, we also reviewed two items that are on the agenda today for approval. One of them, item 6.1H, under our business services um, section, uh, where we have a professional services agreement with DLR. They do architecture on humanities, and we're increasing their fees by $25,000 because we need to cover the additional cost associated with the Coastal Commission approvals and the revisions that the Coastal Commission is, is requiring because um, in 1985 we did an expansion of humanities uh, apparently that the Coastal Commission did not approve. It did not go through their process. So now as we remodel humanities, they are insisting on certain changes and adjustments um, and hopefully we will get through their process in time not to delay the entire project. But we don't know yet. Uh, the other item on the agenda is 6.2E, which is the SBCC Long Range Development Plan, and our approval is needed of this revision again for the Coastal Commission so that it will then go on the Coastal Commission agenda, we hope, um, for their approval. Um, we can't guarantee it at this point, but I know our uh, Joe and Julie and everyone is doing everything they can. 
Um, and finally, we looked at the district and Measure V project status, reviewed the various projects, um, including our progress on obtaining DSA approval of seven projects that need that approval. So um, those are the things we did in facilities. And by the way, we all, uh, if it's not already apparent, we recommend approval of those two items that I mentioned. Okay, good. Uh, anything from um, fiscal? Uh, fiscal did not meet. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Um, President Blum, yes. just to uh, okay. also comment, mm -hmm. we elected a chair for the um, facilities. I actually noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this, uh, Trustee Cronin, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Okay, um, AB 955. Yes. Um, Doss Williams, Assemblymember Doss Williams, has um, uh, authored uh, AB 955 uh, with the sponsoring entity, Long Beach City College, and we included documentation in your packet. And basically, what it allows institutions to do doesn't require; it is permissive. If you meet certain criteria, criteria, and that criteria is that you're at your funded enrollment cap for two years in a row, then you would be able to, as an institution, offer credit-bearing courses through community service as extension courses during intercession and or during summer session. And being community service or extension, they would be fee-based, non-state subsidy and they would be capped at our uh, non-resident um, uh, tuition. So uh, ours is 211 or, or something like that per unit. It's meant to address the demand while not um, creating a two-tiered structure within the primary term. Um, and those primary terms are considered fall and spring, or if you're on the quarter system, fall, winter, and spring. We have been asked by um, Assemblymember Williams and by uh, the Superintendent President of Long Beach City College to proffer our uh, support for AB 955. Uh, this is one of the things that Assemblymember Williams came to the Academic Senate to dialogue about, and, and certainly uh, Senate President Nevins may have comments related to that. But I wanted to provide you, the board, the opportunity to discuss this and to render either a, a no um, position or a support position or a non-support position, whatever you decide. Okay. And um, of course, what jumps out at first is the, the disparity in costs. So if I wanted to sign up for a class I really needed and have it in the summer in, in that session, instead of the $46, I'd be paying over 200 So that's about a unit. Um, so that's of concern, but on the other hand, it, it might not be offered at any other time. So um, that may just be what has to happen. I'm just not quite sure. It it, uh, it bothers me a bit, though. The first thing that mm -hmm. came out to me is, you know, the bill uh, mentions veterans, and the way I understand it is, veterans have 36 months to complete. So right. during this winter, they would not be taking the full amount of units anyway, nine units, to get their full housing allowance, but it would still take away from the weeks in their total. So as a veteran, I'm thinking, well, would I use up four of my weeks at a, to get only a small percentage when I can tack that on to the, you know, semester? It just doesn't seem very cost effective from a veteran. Um, and the next thing I thought is, you know, again, because I kept mentioning that this will impact our veterans, is are the courses that are going to be offered are the courses that the veterans will need. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about them, you know, having lots of field experience, but then not getting credit. You know, so it just seems kind of like we're talking about in the classroom getting 21st century hands on real world experience. Our veterans have that. Now we're asking them to go backwards and do tech stuff. Um, so those kind of things brought up to me that I just don't know if it's very cost effective for them because they can get, you know. Right. And there's another element to the veteran students. They actually have priority, their first priority for registration. And so they're not the ones necessarily shut out of access to the these are degrees, certificate, and basic skills courses, correct? They're, they they get top of the line along with uh, foster care youth, or uh, mm -hmm. those students who were in the foster care system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I would be interested in hearing uh, comments from, from Dean from the Academic Senate and Liz if she has any um, comments from our classify. Okay. And, and if appropriate, or Dr. Gaskin, if yeah. you could give yeah. some pros and cons. Okay, Dean? Well, um, 
It hasn't been brought before the full Senate because of the fact that uh, um, Assemblymember Williams came to talk to us about it, and he didn't actually give us a lot of uh, pre-warning as to what he's going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of sprung on everybody, and, but, but there was a good discussion that came about because of the topic. And as uh, President Gaskin pointed out, um, the problem that it, that it says it's going to solve, it doesn't really solve, and that's the issue. Also, there's some significant considerations that were voiced by the faculty about equity, because you have to have quite a bit of money to take these kinds of classes, and so clearly not everybody who needs those kinds of classes will be able to afford to take them. And that was the biggest concern that was articulated by the faculty. Also, quite frankly, we've had difficulty getting teachers to teach the classes that we need to offer more of. We had temporary contracts brought forward because we literally couldn't get anybody to teach those kinds of classes anymore because we are teachers, we're offering so many already and we need to offer more, but there's just not enough teachers who are qualified who do a good job. Right. So uh, it's not clear if this would actually even be feasible on our campus, quite frankly, because of the fact that we may not have the teachers to offer these classes, plus what classes are offered. That's very difficult and there are varying needs by different groups and so we may not be able to capture all those things. And if these classes are very small, what's the cutoff? You know, if your veterans are depending upon these classes and also me cancel the class, that's even worse than if we don't offer it to begin with. So there was a lot of reservations expressed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Will, the, will the Senate actually take a vote to express its approval or disapproval? Um, I, I wasn't actually planning on bringing that forward as a Senate vote. I, I really don't, I don't know if we want to get into the business of trying to vet every piece of crazy legislation that comes from <laughs> <laughs> so. You said that. <laughs> oh, it's on camera. No, but <laughs> I wouldn't say it's crazy, but I mean, I don't know if it's a really good solution for the kind of problems we're trying to solve. Right. Well, we, we have had some experience in California with, uh, uh, with something similar, and, mm -hmm. and the problem was that it was perceived generally as a two-tiered system. Absolutely. It is and, a two-tiered system. And, and how do we respond to the public? In what, in what sense is this in the public interest? Right. Right. And I think you run the danger also of if this is seen as an effective method to provide classes, well, why not do it all the time? And I think that is a real danger of this approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, did Assemblymember Williams seem to acknowledge that that might be the flaw in the ointment? Uh, remember my earlier comment about how there's a political culture and the academic culture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where they meet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Anybody else? Yes, Craig. I'm looking for some comments on the issue that, as I read this, and I read it several times, and it, it seemed that there was no downside, and I'll, I'll tell you how got, what got me thinking about that, and I'm not convinced one way or the other at this point, but I was thinking about that because it, it said that none of these, no classes offered under this purview should take the, clay, the place of regular credit, uh, quote unquote, I guess, subsidized classes. Um, they would be offered solely in addition to. Um, and I know of some, probably everybody knows of a few students that couldn't get classes because they weren't offered at an appropriate time when they could take them or they couldn't squeeze it in or they're trying to get totally done by a certain deadline. Um, for some people it may be more than feasible to pay a few dollars to get, another, to get one of those classes so they could get finished faster, but in the wording of what's proposed, it was pretty adamant. Um, I felt it was pretty adamant that none of these class offerings should take the place of regular, of the class being offered regularly. Um, so, but based on what you say, I'm, you know, kind of confused on, on uh, which way to, to think mm -hmm. about it. I, I just didn't see a downside. It, let yes. me give you an example. Right. Let, let's Please. take a real world example. Um, our students need a um, certain course, Math 107, which is Intermediate Algebra, in order to receive an associate degree. The only courses that we can offer under, if this were to go through, are uh, courses leading to certificates, degrees, or transfer preparation. So let's say we have a need, now there's two scenarios here. Let's say we have a need for Math 107, Intermediate Algebra, in the summer, okay? Let's say we offer, I'm simplifying it, two sections. Mm -hmm. One that's normal, state subsidized, $46 a unit, and the second one is $211 a unit. So it's going to be the people who have um, first um, priority who can get into this $46 a unit, and then the other students, it's going to be by money, socioeconomic status, that they're going to be able to enroll in this class, in this second one at $211 a unit. What if we just offer one Math 107 well, then that really speaks to the notion of if you've got the financial resources or not. 
And I would encourage you to think about who we target and who we serve in summer. Who we serve are four different types of students. Our students trying to accelerate their um, educational plan through their, to their goal attainment. So our current students, we get high school matriculants, high school seniors who just graduated who want to jumpstart their academic career. We get those students who are still in high school who have academic enrichment interests and want to jumpstart through dual enrollment. And then we get those students who have come back home uh, from four-year institutions and need to pick up a class and frankly, we're a lot more cost effective than their four-year institutions. So I worry about all of those people. I to me, summer session has always been about access and about providing opportunity. And I'm, I'm not sure um, that it works. Yeah, it, it seemed to me that when you take the idea and you apply it to us, it doesn't fit. Um, because it says, because the courses are offered at intercession, they would not compete with state-funded courses offered during fall and spring. Well, we are offering summer, and we expect to continue offering summer. And it also said that you had to be at CAP for the last two years. We won't be at CAP this year, so we wouldn't even be eligible to do this, which tells me that we really don't have and in, if we took a position, we would be speaking as to other colleges at this point, not to ourselves. Um, and I agree with you, um, Dr. Gaskin. I, 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 the students that I was wondering about are the high school students who need a class to complete what their requirements for the four-year college. This bill doesn't speak to that. Um, and they have a low enrollment priority. So they're not getting first choice in getting into our classes. Um, but at the same time, that access issue, the disparity of cost is a concern. Right. Interesting. Okay, Liz, did you have something? Well, I just wanted to respond to Marcia since mm -hmm. she has classified view. We haven't actually discussed it in our consultation group, but I have discussed it with colleagues around the state. I'm on a CSA community college committee, and when it was brought to us uh, through our legislative person, uh, we had similar concerns about the, having a tiered system and what was voiced by Dr. Gaskin and by uh, Senate President Dean Nevins. So we have similar concerns. Okay. These, these bills, though, don't always get passed just as they are. So this might be tweaked in other ways, and who knows what it'll end up being. Uh, Dr. Hassan? A, a bill is not a law. A bill right. is a proposal. A bill is a moving target. If we can identify our concerns uh, and, and with, with care and, and appreciation pass those concerns on to the assembly member, um, there is a, a substantial opportunity here for an amendment that might, might work. Uh, it sounds as if we collectively have some serious reservations. And I think we should be honest enough with DAS to identify them and, um, and give them some feedback. I concur. Okay, that'd be good. And I, I still okay. think for a very limited number of students, possibly, that this could be an effective alternative. But if it's going to impact our mission, yeah. then you know, we, we should address those. But I still, I ju I'm still viewing it like, even though we okay. might not use it, that it could be a tool that we could have in the, in the box as opposed to no tool in the box. Um, just the way I'm thinking at the moment. Yeah. Just okay. one Lisa? last thing. Dr. Haslund, you said this had been tried or something like this had well, yeah, been tried in the had, past. Uh, what that, is that? That famous uh, case where I think it was Santa Monica, Santa Monica. College oh, was, just the recent. was going to be having a two-tiered system. And first of all, the public reaction was pretty negative. And secondly, um, it seems as if when we reflect on our mission, uh, it's not consistent with the mission, which is to provide uh, a, a low-cost, high-quality education, largely to those who um, can't afford anything else. And here we were really saying, yeah, but maybe, maybe we can have an exemption. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe exemptions are, are not what we're about. Maybe instead what we should be doing is finding the resources with which to provide additional sections of Math 107. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, this is the first that I, I've, I've read this, and I, I uh, know and, and love our member of assembly of the state assembly, 
He's a former student of mine, and uh, uh, I want to be supportive of his position, but I, I, I see some very real reservations, mm -hmm. and we should be honest about that, and, uh, and perhaps he and his colleagues can find a way out of that. Right. Yeah. I, I think a focus on who are the students, as Dr. Gaskin indicated, that, that, we, that would need this and benefit. I mean, um, uh, Veronica has indicated that she's a little doubtful that the veterans would be actually helped in that situation as she looks at it. Um, so a focus on the students who would, ha who would be helped, which to my mind might be the, the high school students who need that extra credit to get into a four-year student institution and would not, according to the description, be allowed to, to participate in this program. And at the same time, a focus on um, what exactly are the classes that are needed and, as you said, finding the resources to offer those classes at the $46 um, that everyone else is paying that we are currently using for our tuition. If you recall our prior prior study session, and we were we were sort of brainstorming about what really ought to happen. What was our top priority? And the first thing that came out of of, of my mind was let's get rid of tuition, or at least lower it to the point where we we really go back to the original mission of a community college. And uh, frankly, I believe that that the citizens of the state of California have been, uh, been sold a bill of goods, that education is cheap, and they assume that we can, we can really do it with the resources that are allocated. And well, frankly, we know how to teach. The, the faculty at Santa Barbara City College is second to none. They understand it and, uh, and, and are not convinced that you can press uh, uh, 300 people into a classroom and do the same job that you could without a sense of community and without a sense of uh, the, the kind of dedication that a, a faculty member might have for a small class. It's, it's really simple. And for us to ignore it, I think, is uh, fundamentally wrong. So can we recommend to him to work on, I mean, it, like, you know, going back to veterans, I, when you look at some universities, what they offer, you look at the characteristics of a veteran. And they're an adult learner. Some of them have families. Um, It'd be nice that they could offer, some universities offer in a semester a full load, but back to back, like six weeks, six weeks, six weeks. So then the institution could bill, so then they could still get the, all their GI benefits, but they're not juggling kids and family and going back to school three classes at a time. Right. And so it'd just be nice if we get innovative and just offer something that makes sense because our veterans deserve it and that just should, that should be expected. They deserve excellence and I think we can offer them that. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Do you want um, either? Are you? Will you contact us, or do you want me to? Or? Sure. I, mean, I, well, I think you. Well, you have such a depth of understanding of the teaching around here. I think this would be a good idea. Sure. Is that okay? I'll be glad. Okay. To. We'll do it that way because this is just for information, but it's an interesting bill, and, and, and could and affect I, us. I would really like uh, the Senate to weigh in. If if this yeah. is something that is contentious, <coughs> and if the Senate which is primarily responsible for the, the curriculum and the, the core educational experience here. Uh, I, I would certainly like for them to weigh in. It isn't just another crazy idea. This is, this is an idea that comes to us from Long Beach City College, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think uh, the assembly member has been very kind in, in wanting to sponsor such a bill. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the story. And uh, so all of, the, all of the, the groups on campus that have something to do and something to say about education, what really happens, uh, I think this is the time to weigh in on this particular measure before we're asked to take a vote. Okay. And I think Veronica's ideas of uh, you know, look, really looking at the GIs and seeing what is it that they need. Uh, it's possible they need something else besides being priority in the classes we have. There might be some kind of program that we should be looking at for them. I think that would be a good idea to look at that anyway. So, okay, thanks. Um, we're on to item 2.1, balloting for the 2013 election of candidates for community college trustees, California community college trustees. We get to vote for seven, and it's always kind of awkward because the people who are nominated, we don't really know them. 
Um, yeah. Um, yes, they've been giving us emails, and one of them left a, a message on my very old answering machine. I couldn't tell who it was. I couldn't even tell whether it was a man or a woman. <laughs> I was like, so I've got to get a new answering machine. But anyway, they're calling us and, and emailing us and so on and sending letters. Um, I asked um, Trustee Macker to look into this a bit, and, and maybe you can come out with some. Uh, well, I do have a little bit of feedback. Okay, and then I have some too, but go ahead. Well, I did uh, check with our former trustee, Luis Viegas, just to see he'd been involved in statewide for so many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he indicated he didn't know. I gave him the complete list of candidates, and he doesn't know any of the non-incumbents. But of the incumbents, he said he would fully endorse any or all of them. So uh, that was one piece of information that I got. Um, personally, I had some people who stood out uh, on, on the list. Linda Waugh, I, I, you know, I appreciated her involvement in uh, workforce development, her work in support of women and women's issues. Um, and then uh, Louise Jaffe, uh, Santa Monica, who is an incumbent. Lauren Steck. Is that how you say his last mm -hmm. name? Lawrence Steck. Um, he uh, uh, is an advocate for local control and, and had a lot to say about the, some of the shortcomings in the initial student task force report. And I agreed with his views on that. Uh, it just seems like he would be an advocate uh, in, along similar lines that we're interested in. So, um, and then Adrian Gray. Dr. Gaskin, I guess, has worked with her and has strongly uh, endorsed her as a candidate. So Lauren Steck, Adrian Gray, Louise Jaffe, Linda Waugh uh, were some that stood out for me. Okay. And I don't know Diane McKay, but she comes from Ventura College, which is right nearby, so that might be, you know. But she's only been on their board for two years, so I'm not quite sure uh, about her, but anyway. As have all of us. I know. I know. That's why I didn't go for it. Because <laughs> I thought, you know. For a statewide yeah. position. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay. Trustee Croninger has Croninger. done some well, research. Well, are you done? Well, yes. Well, I, I had also thought, Diane, um, mm -hmm. her interests look, look congruent with the things that I was interested in. And um, uh, Sue Keith uh, at Citrus was interesting uh, in her comments. And then we had two people from Ohlone College, which um, I think is, is you know, pretty uh, one of the leading colleges uh, among the general group. So uh, between them, I didn't have a, an opinion, but I thought that was a, a good college to, to have input into the CCCT. CCCT? Greg hmm? from Ohlone? Well, it's Greg Bona Cor Corsi or Garrett um, Yee. So I don't know if you have any insight into that. Okay. But I okay. I honestly don't think we could go wrong because they, they all have good resumes and they all, you know, had had good oh, statements yeah. to make. So, so, but we we do have only. This is why we're talking about it. We only have one vote for seven of them, and that's it. So, you know, if we could each vote separately, it'd probably be easier. But oh well. That's, and that's probably I think because that's how we did it last time. We, we did. And then Angie tallied. We did, so we had. I'll tell you again if you'd like. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. So, um, uh, just unless did, go ahead. Well, did anyone else uh, between those two from Ohlone, mm -hmm. Dr. Haslin, did you know? I uh, have you met with no. either Garrett Yee or Greg? No. no. Yeah. Okay. I have okay. not. So, it seems like yeah. what we could, if we could agree generally on a slate of seven and have one vote, would be mm -hmm. okay. most expeditious. Okay, so we have Linda Waugh and Louise Jaffe from Santa Monica. I also looked at like colleges, and Santa Monica is a lot like Santa Barbara, only richer and has more people there. But, uh, but they, in, in some ways, with the tourists and so on, uh, are a lot like Santa Barbara. And uh, Lauren Steck, um, and again, that's Car Carmel Monterey, and that's, again, like Santa Barbara in a lot of ways. And she, uh, Lauren had a PhD from UCLA, and I thought that was a, in education, I think. Uh, and then Adrian Gray, so that's four. Um, is there anything, anybody else to add to that? We need three more. Oh, we don't. 
and do the bullet voting. Oh, I always, you know, obviously the K-12, I mean, you know, people that have, uh, you know, like Sally was superintendent of schools, director of special ed, like right. just all that diverse back to just, just because I think that that's very powerful when, you know, speaking to community colleges, that's who, you know. Okay. And so you wanted to put whose name in there? I'm sorry, Sally Biggin? Um, no, I'm just throwing it out. It just oh. in terms of just when we're looking at, you know, talking about resumes or things that they've done. Right. And I think just that's a very, you know, it's powerful. You know, she's done a lot in right. that in that world. Right. Especially director of special ed. That's a tough um, department. We you know. <laughs> so let's add her name then, Sally Biggin. Okay. So we need a couple more. Do we want to vote for two others of the... Uh, if we can come up with a slate here. Craig had a... I, okay, thing. Craig. As I was reading through these, I, mm -hmm. and I, I looked, I did what you guys did. I kind of looked for colleges that were more similar mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the people's backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I kind of like, um, and I believe I met the gentleman once at Howard Rudd, uh, Sierra College. He's the second one on the list. And I, okay. You know, since, uh, but I'm not like prejudice here one way or the other. Yeah, but we need, if, we're gonna, if we need a slate, I would add him to my slate. Okay. Howard Red. Did we say Garrett from Maloney? Is that how you said Garrett from Maloney? Garrett Yee? Yeah, from Maloney. Yeah, he was he was uh, one of the alumnus. Garrett Yee? From Y-E-E? From, -E. from Maloney? Yeah, Maloney. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Well, that would make seven. Good. I'm very comfortable with that last recommendation. Thank you. Yeah. As I said, I went through all of them, and I was impressed by every single one of them. So I was like... So, and they stuck their necks out, each of them, so they've got to be yeah. mm -hmm. brave. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me read them off and let's see what we think. Okay. okay. Uh, we have Linda Waugh from, um, well, I'll just read the names. Linda Waugh, Louise Jaffe, Lauren Steck, Adrian Gray, Sally Biggin, Howard Rudd, and Garrett Yee. I think we've... I think is that a we, good one? Yeah, I think what you've, we've done is we've picked a very diverse slate, and I think that's good. Yeah, I think so too. Now, so, Gaskin, could you help us understand what this board does? <laughs> so that we can understand what the consequence of our action is. This is a good the idea. Community College League of California represents two um, uh, bodies in the California Community College system, the trustees and the CEOs. And each of those bodies has a board so there is a board that um, works with Scott Lay at the state level of trustees, and this is the triple CT, the California Community College trustees, and then there's a CEO board that works directly with Scott Lay, comprised of my colleagues. So this is simply informing Scott and the league of policy decisions that affect the community college system as a whole relative to your responsibilities. That's good. Okay, thank Thanks. You. Okay. Yeah. In other words, they don't do anything. No. <laughs> yeah. no, at the end of last January, when we went to uh, yes. Sacramento, mm -hmm. yes. at least I was really exposed to this in a, in a very real way, right. as opposed to just reading it. Thank you. Right. No, that's it, actually it's it's hard work in a, a state that's as large as ours too. Well, you know, they only do this for the money, you know. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Not quite. Okay. Um, well, we have a slate. Is there um, a motion to to um, elect them by acclamation. We could do that, the seven. I so move. Okay, is there a second? Yes. Okay, and we have the seven. We have Linda Waugh, Louise Jaffe, Lawrence Deck, Adrian Gray, um, Sally Biggin, Howard Rudd, and Garrett Yee. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We got through that. It's, it's a difficult thing, <laughs> but we did it. Okay, um, next. I skipped something, and that is items for future board consideration. Is there anything that you would like on the board agendas? Well, uh, I just want to, I'd like to mm -hmm. ask a question about the April meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues that Ed Policies Committee has come up with has to do with uh, searching for an answer to the question of why so many students who transfer are not eligible for college level math or English. Will there be a chance to discuss that at this meeting? That's one of the main topics. We're simply not um, calling it that. Okay. The request of our partners. So yes, it's called College Connections. And it's the flow of students from the Unified District to the college. Good. 
Thank you. Yeah. It should be interesting. That's good. Okay. Revision to our mi mission statement. Laurie? Well, this is um, pretty monumental. Um, you know, we're, we've tackled a lot this year with our uh, special report for accreditation and our board policies and administrative procedures. And uh, now we're tackling integrated planning. And integrated planning is not only a good thing to do so that you're not planning the different elements of your college in silos, but it is also something that is um, sought after when we go up for reaccreditation. It implies that we have a collective and collaborative approach to looking at the future of our institution, both the educational programs as well as the operational end of it. So I, I put forth a quote here that ACCJC expects that we have integrated planning that, um, and that then forms the nexus for our educational programs and what we intend to do. Central to integrated planning is a mission statement, our mission. And while we have a mission, and that is so included in your documentation, and it's just a copy from our catalog, um, the mission is um, uh, quite comprehensive and perhaps um, uh, a little bit hard to, to parse in terms of what it is our, our focus is all about. And indeed, one of the, the guiding principles for missions is that um, it's concise, it's clear, it provides um, a real sense of purpose about direction. So as a part of your uh, annual goals for this year, you directed uh, through me that the institution simply re-look at the mission statement. So we hired a consultant to help us do that, Eva Conrad, and she sat down with CPC, CCG, the Classified Consultation Group, the Academic Senate, the Student Senate, the Executive Council, the Dean's Council, the Manager's Group, um, the Board of Trustees, I believe I got everybody, and went through a focus group on what, what do we envision the college to be like in the next five years, seven years, something of that sort, and what really distinguishes us and from those focus groups, a set of themes or elements emerged very readily. So we then convened CPC and added to CPC uh, more representation from the constituent groups, and the board had representation with Marty and with Marianne. And we looked at those themes and began to work with a revised mission statement. And that revision is presented to you for first reading and it's in the form of a pretty lengthy document. The actual mission statement is quite concise, but it has a preamble, and the preamble is very purposeful. It's meant to address the expectations that ACCJC has of us, that we understand and know who we are and who we serve, and that we're committed to student learning. So I'll, I'll, read that. I'll read the mission statement as a public community college dedicated to the success of each student. Santa Barbara City College provides students a diverse learning environment. Diverse and learning stood out when we went through all that, that focus input. That inspires, these key words are really critical, inspires and curiosity and discovery stood out. Promotes global responsibility, those were critical words that came through the themes, and fosters opportunity for all. That will, um, if you so approve, become our mission statement, but in the catalog and on our website, it will be blanketed or sandwiched, if you will, with our core principles, of which you heard the Academic Senate is re-examining those, which is great. Uh, and also our charter. We all felt it was very important to capitalize actually on something that, that was the whole of our current mission statement, which is almost right out of education code, our purpose and mission from the California Community Colleges. And so we captured that as our charter. What we're not losing is how we operationalize our mission and how we measure our mission. And those are our institutional learning objectives, student learning objectives, which are gonna stay put, and they're, um, they're detailed in the catalog, and that will remain so both in the catalog and on the website. I just didn't reprint it here. But this is the mission statement. It's something then, you know, uh, if you so approve it, this is first reading, that will be 
ensuring that the campus community understands, embraces, and is um, uh, uh, found across all aspects of our institution. So that's for your consideration. Okay, thank you. I think it's good to have a brief, uh, and I was amazed at that meeting how we just came up with it. So it was terrific. Um, Ms. Kroninger. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great that the Academic Senate is looking mm -hmm. at the core principles, and I'm wondering if it makes sense to also be looking at the same time at this institutional SLOs. I mean, how often do mm -hmm. we revisit those? Um, to that, can you respond mm -hmm. to those? Yeah. yeah. At some point, probably um, this year, I think, um, just to look at it. Um, is there any major uh, initiatives that you see looking at our whole general education? Looking at, um, Should we have that on the yeah. mic? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something that. Um, it's on the mic. Oh. Take the mic, Yeah, that would be great. After a couple words, we want you to come up here. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll be discussing um, with the Senate and the faculty and, you know, the college-wide is um, re-looking at our whole general education curriculum. And we've got a very exciting um, opportunity with the CSU system to do some creative things to make um, a general education curriculum um, more than a smorgasbord of classes. But the point I'm making in response to your question is that there was a national group made up of um, you know, colleges and universities nationwide they came up with what we call institutional SLOs um, to measure what students should learn as a, as a result of um, a general education. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be revisiting um, that in relation to our SO, ISLOs, we call them ISLOs, institutional SLOs. Um, this spring, over the summer, we'll have special work groups and next fall, and they'll be done hand in hand. Um, and I think you know, we'll be um, setting some you know, brand new ground um, in advancing our, um, our curriculum. And, and, and academic senate is a part of what that, you just described. They'll be part of that for sure. Um, we, you know, we've alerted them to it, but now um, the next step is now that CSU said we can do this. Now we're, we'll be engaging um, the senate and college um, faculty and staff, you know, um, college wide in this conversation because it's transformational. But we're not doing it unless we have buy-in and support. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, Lisa. I. I wasn't clear on the development of the charter. Mm. The charter is education code. It's straight out of ed code. And all as, I did. It's currently it, printed here. Well, no, it's a, it's a summary of, it's not what ed code actually yeah. says. Well, actually, it is, um, the primary mission, academic and vocational instruction at the lower division level. No, I mean, if you read the statute, they don't write well. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not really as, I think someone has summarized it and tried to make it clearer. No, I, I summarized it, but really? the words, like I would never say vocational instruction, but that's mm -hmm. directly out of, Ed, your, uh, Trustee Croninger is absolutely right, written terribly. <laughs> so I tried not to change it yeah. too much while mm -hmm. still maintaining the intent. No, I understand. Okay. I'm just saying this is not an Ed Code section no. we're looking at, and I thought that's what Lisa was asking. It's, my, it's my a summary question. of an Ed Code section. My bigger question is this, this spot here that says our char or charter, is that going it's, through governance groups and getting no, looked at? No, it's or? ed code. There's, there's a primary mission, essential and important functions and authorized functions. So I did have the entire code section there and then I was asked to simply summarize it. Summarize it. And yes, it but that is, is what is. Mm -hmm. It frames the California Community College system. So if you think of it all, almost as a funnel, that frames it, and then this is Santa Barbara City College, the mission. Mm -hmm. And before, that was included in some Broadway in the mission. four pages of our yeah. mission. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And the, only, the only difficulty is that the legislature also has a tendency to add in other statutes here and there as they think of things. And so if you look around in the Ed Code, you will find other statutes that sound very much like and your mission is this, and your mission is that. <laughs> so, yes. um, and you're right, it, the global it, competitiveness is in a different, um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah.
Okay. Do we need to vote on this? This is a first reading. Yeah. It'll be back at your regular meeting okay. in April. Okay. Okay. Anything, anything anybody else wants to say on this? I think we've got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's good. Uh, human resources, Ms. English. Good afternoon, President Blum, members of the board, and President Gaskin. I'm here to present the Human Resources Consent Agenda Items 4.1a through 4.1d. I don't have any changes, but I do have one thing that I wanted to point out to you, as long as we're talking about milestones at the meeting tonight. You will find on uh, page 1 of 4 of 4.1a our first faculty appointment for the upcoming fall semester. And that's just to call your attention to it, and there will be more to follow in subsequent months as those individuals are identified, and we bring them to you for approval. So I'm submitting these now for your approval. Okay. Does any, anybody want to take any of them off? Otherwise, we can vote on them, I think, as a consent item. I'm not actually taking anyone off, but every time I see one of these retirements, I'm always tempted to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> because we're losing somebody that has been important to the college right. and really contributed to everything we are, and, and <coughs> that's sad yeah, for us. Who right. do they think they are retiring? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I wish I'm sure they're happy they're retiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so can we have a vote on uh, 4.1a through d? I, is there a motion? I move approval. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That was quick. And that was a lot of pages mm -hmm. to read. Yeah. And a lot of names. Yeah. Yeah, these uh, retirements, it's kind of strange, but I, for a number of them, I've been involved when they were hired, and now I'm seeing them retired, so. Uh, what does that make you think? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I go, gosh, um, what do they know that I don't know? Um, but I'll, you know, maybe in a decade I'll find out. Um, but anyway, um, under educational programs, are recommending um, approval 5.1, um, stipends for faculty. Okay, I'm sorry, it's taking me a second to get to it. Like, where are we now? 5.1, nope. Under page 122 or 3 Thank or something you. like that. <laughs> I know, when you tell somebody I had to read 332 pages. I know, I asked, Paul, <laughs> I asked Paul if there's an easy way to just put a number in, but he says he's working on that. Yeah, good. But right now, good. it's... Thank you. Okay, coming to a theater near us, huh? Okay, 5.1, there it is. I just wanted to ask, I mean, whenever it says it's paid through the grant, I'm yes. sure there's a process that gets checked, just how was that financial aid we're paying, and then we're like, oh, we couldn't pay him, Eli, when we had to let him go because of the, we were paying out of funds that didn't. This is, stipends are a little bit different. So the grant, like, so like under STEM, like there he's in a grant and that's going to be within the grant and we're right. not going to say you violated or. No. For example, um, there's one item that we chose not to put on here for a grant because when we checked the chancellor's office, it was, um, it was out of scope. So oh. we um, told the contractor, no, we can't um, do that. So we scrutinize it internally. Just making sure because I saw a lot yeah. of grants. And, and the one about the uh, financial aid, we just didn't know about it. And yeah. they, so they sent out a letter to all the colleges. It's almost like um, new rules type of thing. So it wasn't like um, you know, we knew about it or anybody else knew about it. It caught everybody by surprise. Yeah. What, what would be the mm -hmm. criteria for providing a, a stipend for curriculum development? The criteria is if it's outside of what um, would normally be asked of a faculty member to do within their discipline. So, for example, if we're asking, um, like the project I was talking to you about, um, for faculty to learn about a new area and develop interdisciplinary kinds of courses, would that have to re you know, require them to learn about um, um, disciplines outside of what they normally would teach? That would qualify for a stipend. Um, whereas, if they were developing something in history for a history faculty member, that wouldn't be a stipend on that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Okay. Can we have a motion to accept this? Uh, 5.1, the stipends. Okay, is there a second? Okay, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, thank you. Item 5.2, um, 
these are new courses and course modifications. It's quite an extensive list. And as the write-up says, they've all been you know, reviewed by our curriculum advisory committee and approved. Okay. There is quite a list here. Yeah. Are Why so many modifications? Yeah. Um, a lot of the modifications are um, changes in um, what they need to change um, to make the courses um, eligible for the CIDs. The CIDs are course um, identification numbers um, to, for, for the associate, you know, associate transfer degrees. Mm -hmm. They are now requiring um, you know, some changes um, to make them consistent with what the new degree requirements are. These are the automatic transfer yeah. groupings that we right. have if you want to transfer to CSU or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so that's part of it. Um, another part is, you know, in the career tech area is just um, upgrading courses. What we're doing also, you'll see a lot more of this going forward, is um, we're responsible for every three years um, to review all our courses, of course the record outlines and update them. Okay. And so now we're um, um, being a little bit more rigorous in um, enforcing that. Um, and so you'll see uh, lots of course modifications going forward. Yeah. This was something that came up as part of the audit, correct? And that, and I think Dr. Gaskin, you mentioned every six years, every course at the at the outset. at the most, every yes. course needs to right. go through this yes. review. Right. right. That's good. Okay. It's easier to do a little bit at a time. Yeah, it is. So, um, so, so you know, so you'll, you'll see a lot of agenda items going forward. Okay. On this category. Can I have a motion for new courses and course modifications? So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Sure. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. 5.3 is um, these are continuing education state funded courses and certificates. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, whoops. We better take a motion first. Is there a motion? Okay. Mary Ann. Second. Marsha. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I just, I just had a quick question. These are the ESL classes, they're now called modules, so they're different now? The well, even though they're classes, the like modules, did they might. the structure of how Yeah, they changed, they changed the structure um, um, to allow for um, a quicker progression okay. uh, through ESL, non credit ESL. They also um, incorporated. Um, where they could um, career technical skills into the ESL courses, as opposed to having the students learn, you know, the basic vocabulary separate, um, because they were complaining about that, saying it was taking them too much time. So this is an integration of that curriculum, um, um, to give them a clear path, but also themes based on um, career clusters. Are so they both to complete in shorter amount of time? Correct, and that's. Um, what we're looking at both on the credit side and we're going to be revisiting it on non-credit as well, um, looking at much more acceleration because time's the enemy. And so um, what's nice about this integration of non-credit into, um, you know, educational programs is, um, you know, starting the summer next year, we'll be looking at it together as a, as a college as opposed to two separate units, including the handoff and the uh, smooth flow from non-credit to credit. Okay. So we voted on that. Um, Excellent. Next, in 5.4, we have continuing ed. Uh, tuition fee-based classes. Mm -hmm. There are only two of those. Yeah. Can we have a motion? I so move. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Very good, thanks, Jay. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, on to business services. Yeah, Chris, oh, Dr. Okay. Freelander, uh, just a, a nice comment. I, I liked uh, what you just said. Um, and how you closed your remarks there, um, that you know one of the nice benefits of having the um, of bringing the ESL in house on as part of the campus because I had heard disparaging comments, leaning you know totally the opposite of what you what you said. So it's very pleasant for me to hear that. Thank you yeah. mm -hmm. for we, um, confirming the way I've been leaning. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah we just completed uh, our third business process analysis looking at all the continuing education functions and processes. And I have to say, um, the amount of support now for what we're doing um, in the integration has just been very gratifying, but exciting to me for the possibilities for students that they will be able to make a very quick, proper transition into jobs or to, into college you know, um, preparation much more um, fluidly um, and seamlessly. And that's our goal. 
to do that. So thank you very much. Um, we applaud it. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say, Jack, I know that, that Robert has plenty to do, but it will be helpful if we can keep track of some of that mm -hmm. transition and the data on that. Yeah, part of um, what we're looking at is moving all of our non-credit into um, Banner, mm -hmm. and that will allow for us to do much better tracking. Um, because they'll have one system, one database, one set of identifi identifiers. So that'll make that much more, much easier to do. Plus, um, what we'll be doing over the summer next year is building that transitional curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, so the students will take a course where they might start off in non-credit, but they'll wind up in credit, um, including you know, the orientation classes and all the services. It's very exciting um, yeah. what's, what's no, going to happen. Yeah, that would be wonderful, and it would be great to see the progress in doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think within two, three years, you'll see the the numbers just go um, um, exponentially higher. Right. Wait, did you say that non-credit will be registered through Banner now? Like yeah, well, the goal is um, what we're doing now with these business process analysis. I know this is not part of the agenda, but I'll go real quick. Is identifying all the processes um, and that we need to make as one college. The goal is that next year um, we'll be doing all the work to move all of non-credit, including the CLL, mm -hmm. into Banner, so we can have one set of systems mm -hmm. um, instead of three, four, or five different systems, um, and um, it would be better for everybody. But that's the goal, yeah. That's what we're doing. Thank you. I'm sure there'll be Number one's getting better. Some people are not. Tacos? OK. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan. Well, it is getting better. I, mm -hmm. I applaud Jack and the group for what they're doing on bringing it all into Banner. It's a lot of work, and yeah. it's very good. Um, I have 6.1, business mm -hmm. services consent items. Does anybody want to take anything off? I just wanted to comment on one, the audit firm contract. I think it's really great to move it around, which is what we're supposed to do. But I think it's been 11 years with the firm that we have. Um, 13 years, 13, actually. OK. And um, we do comply with with all statutes. And oh, yeah. No, no, I know. And you had different um, different people were, were doing the audit within that firm. So that was good. But I think it is time to get fresh eyes and all that. So. Well, it's it was good. a good process, and I would like to thank Lisa for taking the time to sit on the committee with us oh, and, good. and you know, go through the selection process. And um, we definitely will do it again, you know, with Whenever probably two years out from now. Right, right. Okay, good. So, can we have a motion for all the consent items together? Motion for consent. Uh, while we were on that topic, are we approving this year's audit? Right. Yes. A one-year audit one agreement. Year. Yeah, that's year. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Did you make the motion? Did oh, motion? move to approve. Okay, is there a second? I second. Thanks, Craig. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Good. We can take um, resolution number 36, budget mm -hmm. transfers between major objects, and resolution number 37, augmentations to revenue, together. Okay. I would move approval. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Okay, Mary Ann. Uh, this is a resolution. Call the roll, please. Trustee Dieter. Aye. Trustee Bloom. Aye. Trustee Carpenter. Aye. Trustee Gallardo. Aye. Uh, Trustee Haslund. Aye. Trustee Kugler. Aye. Trustee Magnus. Aye. Trustee Nelson. Aye. Okay. Another unanimous vote. There you go. Number 38. Resolution number 38 is the transfers from ending balance. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, move approval. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. All those, oops, resolution. I almost did that. Go ahead. Trustee Dieter? Aye. Trustee Bloom? Aye. Trustee Croninger? Aye. Trustee Gallardo? Aye. Trustee Kugler? Aye. Trustee Macker? Aye. Trustee Nielsen? Aye. Okay. Okay, then resolution number 39 is to appoint a designee for Southern California Community College District's Joint Powers Agency. This is um, to allow Rob Morales actually to go and um, vote in my stead, and they need this to allow him to do that. Right. Move approval. Okay, is there a second? Great. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. That's resolution. Oh, resolution. Oh, and I was going to be so perfect this time. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Call the roll. I tried. Yeah. Get, get used to it. Aye. 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 Aye.
And then we have resolution number 40, which is the SBCC Long Range Development Plan that Marsha Croninger reported on earlier. Okay. Okay. Is there any more discussion or anything? Okay. Can we have a motion to approve? Uh, move approval. Second. Second. Okay. Veronica, uh, and this is a resolution. Aye. 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 And this takes uh, positive thinking to be sent off to the Coastal Commission. It takes a lot of positive thought. Yeah. Number one wants this, right? <laughs> Is that what we're going to do? We can do this. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Did we approve oh. Resolution 41? Yes. By, yeah, we did at the beginning. By, we took that on. roll call? Yeah. I can't yeah. recall whether we voted as a unit, but okay. I'm pretty sure we did. Angie? I guess Angie will know. Oh, I think we did because I took it, I wrote a little note to myself and then I well, we failed can, it recently. We, unfortunately, we can look at the video <laughs> and find out That's for right. sure. That's right. No, I have it written like down here. To do it again, just to be sure. All right, yes. let's, let's All right. be sure. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's take a motion for resolution number 41. I so move. Okay. Is there a second? Second. And for people who are wondering what in the heck that is, that has to do with the general obligation bonds uh, series B. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We did vote for that. We did. Seven zero, but I, I don't, can't remember whether it was by, I thought it was by, but anyway, go ahead by roll call. Aye. 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 Well, that's how know strongly we, we feel about this thing. Yeah, there you go. We got it twice. Okay. Um, Let there be no doubt. No doubt at all. You got it. Okay. Closed sessions. We have three closed sessions. Yes, we have need for a closed session and actually a correction on item two. There is one matter, not two matters. Oh, okay. So just one matter. Okay. And we'll come back in and report out here. Okay. Thank you. We'll try to be quick. Uh, three closed sessions. It's to be here in a second. Should we? Um, we had three closed sessions. The first one was uh, liability claim with Rick Kiroga, and in closed session, the bo board voted 7-0 to deny the liability claim for monetary damages stemming from the termination of his employment. And then the second one was a. Uh, what was the second one? I already lost it. Oh, in closed session, uh, the second one was uh, one matter. Uh, we voted 7-0 uh, to ratify an agreement relating to the settlement of employee-related issues with the assistant controller. Was there one abstention? Six okay, 6-0-1. Six zero. Zero. Yeah. yeah, sorry, thanks. And then the third one is uh, we gave direction to the negotiating team concerning um, the discussion with the Instructors Association. Okay? And with that, we'll be adjourned. Thank you.